Hello, and welcome to Marathons from Stories, where we explore the human side of the superhuman feats of endurance swimmers and those who support them. I'm marathon swimmer and coach Shannon Keegan. Earlier this year, we met Neil Ajuice, who completed an epic 102 kilometer swim from Sicily to Malta just last year. Well, Neil's been busy since then. In today's episode, he tells us everything about the swim and how he planned and prepared to break the world record. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, Neil. Thank you for being uh, with me today. We got your marathon swimming story a little bit earlier this year, but you've been busy since then. Tell us what you've been up to. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me and inviting me again. Always a pleasure sitting down and uh, talking with you. Um, yeah, so basically, since the last time I kind of came on here, I couldn't tell you what I was going to do, but I knew. <laughs> we had had that conversation, I remember. And the plan was to swim from Sicily, from Tunisia to Sicily. And Due to not having a weather window at the right time, we had to, in the last couple of days, change it. And I swam from Linoza to Malta instead, which was 125.7 kilometers. Wow. Wow. Tell us, tell us what the training was like, what the swim was like. Tell us about it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, well, wait, first, was... before, before you get into that, why the heck did you want to go break the world record? Any, any <laughs> reason uh, why? <laughs> to be honest, um, I kind of swam around Malta and then I realized three years later, I'm standing on this ladder in Lenoza about to kind of start the biggest journey of my life. And I kind of, it went from not doing any ultra distance to, being in that position three years later which I'm super grateful to to have been in that position but if you could have put as much money on the table to bet I would have put all my money on the table that I wouldn't be kind of it wouldn't lead to that it was never kind of one of my life goals I would say but now since swimming around Malta I've realized it's kind of my purpose mm. You know, um, I, I'll tell you a little bit about more, more about the swim, but um, it, it was intense, but it was tough. The weather wasn't right. The, we, we encountered a lot. It took me 52 hours to, wow. to swim. It took me, the first 42 kilometers took me 21 hours. Wow. Yeah. And that is for me um really slow compared to what i'm used to that's how much current and wind yeah. and waves i had a headwind for the first 24 to 30 hours mm. of really intensity and then it kind of subsided a little bit but the wind was currently always coming into me in fact we were meant to finish in malta and i ended up finishing in gozo because it was impossible for me to get there yeah. Yeah. And, um, I spoke with Gordon a, a little while back, but he was, it was really important to him that we do, uh, your episode first. So, um, those will come out right after, right after this, but he talks a little bit more detail about that, but what was it like for you in the water? So you're fighting the current. Could you tell you weren't really going that far very fast? What was it like? Um, I knew the current was intense. But when I had done my last longest swim, it was to swim around our sister island of Gozo, which is 38 kilometers. And the weather wasn't ideal at all. It was really rough. And I kind of, you know how it is when it's training, it needs to happen that weekend because then the weekend after it's too close or the weekend, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's kind <laughs> of, you just have to go with it. And my plan was to swim around Gozo and which will take me 12 hours and then rest for 10 and do it again and rest for 10 and do it again. Wow. And, and each time the, the weather was getting more and more intense. So it was really rough. And I wasn't kind of, I just kept pushing you through my normal speed, through my normal speed of what I would do. So still finishing the swims in 12 hours, maybe 12 and a half when I was starting to get tired, but it, the third swim, because it was going to get so rough, we kind of had an hour break and went back right into it. Oh, wow. Um, and my shoulders and everything just kind of was gave up on me. And I realized that, um, okay, so when it's rough, 
don't fight it. Just swim at your own speed. And as much as it slows you down, it slows you down. And, informational training swim, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always, it was the first time I did a kind of had a plan to do something and didn't complete it. Mm. Um, so it was a bit of a uh, difficult for me to accept as well. But I noticed this from the failures is where you kind of learn the most as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did your and other you training? Did, oh, go ahead. If we didn't fail and I didn't do that, then I probably wouldn't have managed to do this swim. Yeah. 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 We learn a lot in those trainings, everything, everything, yeah. everything about it. What, even if, like you said, when you fail, I think we definitely <laughs> learn, yeah. learn from those. What, um, yeah. Take us through your, like how your kind of your training went. Um, my training Other was, than that. <laughs> yeah so the build-up is kind of it's always a six month kind of training plan for me six so months I would, for 100 in, in training for 100k okay or 150 okay yeah <laughs> that's good um and before that kind of I, I do a little bit but kind of a really little bit I really feel that it's super important that when I finish so when I finished swimming Sicily Malta I need to fully recover and it's not fully recovered that I feel okay. It needs to go right inside in every nook and crank and hole and muscle and mind and every part of my brain and my mindset needs to reset yeah. because if it doesn't reset, then I cannot put, push myself to that kind of level and that kind of intensity of training for, for so long. Yeah. And, I appreciate and that a lot for anyone kind of starting out or really trying to really break boundaries if you're not going to rest if you're going to do a 10 hour swim and that's kind of your peak then you're super excited adrenaline's running rushing that you finished it so you have a week break get back into your training you're lowering the ceiling of your potential by doing that I would I I, uh, I appreciate that a lot I feel the same way so I um yeah I like to just stop rest, rest. <laughs> and even, and rest. even when i'm swimming like i'm going to tell you exactly kind of what i do and compared to what i kind of read from through books of other ultra distance athletes i think i do by far the least I, yep i'm right there with you <laughs> but, but yeah yeah so tell us tell us about it um, so like my training would be in the pool usually it's in the pool and mm -hmm. it's during the week it's from monday to thursday in the pool and then Friday and Saturday in the sea for the longer swims. And the Friday will, will be alternating once in the pool and once in the sea. So between Monday and Friday, Monday and Thursday, I'll swim two hours. So about seven, seven kilometer sessions. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't start. Obviously, there's a build up. If I haven't been doing anything for, for four months, I don't jump in and do a six kilometer session. It's, it's kind of like a gradual start the first week of just swimming twice three times a week two three kilometers just till my kind of and kind of build up to that where i'm swimming two hours 7k 7.5k in the pool and then the friday and the saturday i start with two hour swim so what i will do is i alternate my friday and saturday so one week i'll have a two swims on top of each other so two hours and two hours and then the week after i'll have one by three hours Mm -hmm. And then the next one will be one by four, two by five, one by six, two by seven, one by eight, two by nine, one by 10, <laughs> two by 11, and finishing with three by 12 hours. Wow. And, and then the, the mid, the, during the week, it's about seven, seven K swims, not mm -hmm. even every day. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. It kind of depends what session it is, really. Right. And I don't, and I know that I don't try and be too adventurous. So like I have certain sets on certain days, I go down and I do what I need to do and, and keep moving. But I think that probably helps this just having the same thing to do. I've at least, I've heard I mean, I know I, I kind of have a number of sessions and I know that if I'm doing that session, then I can choose from these three. So Monday is choosing from these three, Tuesday is those three. And they kind of always have the same kind of, kind of outcome so like on Thursdays before my long swims in the sea it will always be like a paddle session and it will be going up to 6100 7100s or 35200s or 18400s you know it's that kind of that's that's what that the agenda on those days and then mm -hmm. there'll be other days where I'll be doing six by one k or seven by one k or how many I can last for before it gets too boring looking at the bottom <laughs> I've always, I've always tried to do 10, 10 by 1K, and I have never managed yet. 
I always, <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I always kind of get out the idea. Yeah, I think I'm good for like eight. <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> ten, it's like a milestone. Like each year, like I've tried three times and I haven't managed to do 10 by one. I can do 10K in the sea like easy without right. blinking, blinking an eyelid. But uh, in the pool, <laughs> yeah. it's intense. <laughs> it is, it is. Do you bring like your feeds, like the same kind of feeds, like you bring out to the sea? Like, what's do you practice all that stuff so, in the pool? So then, in the pool, in the pool, what I do is um, I have one speed session where I put my heart rate up. I think that's super important. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Even though you're not going to be doing it in the swim, it's good to shock your heart rate. It's good to get that blood pumping. It's good to to get that lactate inside your body as well. Mm-hmm. and then I always have a paddle session once a week and then the other ones I just swim so yeah. normally. right right yeah then in the sea I, I I take my feeds yes the feeds that I will be eating on the swim as much as possible um, mm-hmm. and I stop every 30 minutes like I would do in the swim and everything is the same um, and I always kind of in the beginning, I start, I try and go faster than, than what I would do in the, in the swim. And then once it starts getting closer, then it's this, that speed, that's the same. That I work with stroke counts because you can't have, um, you can't have a, a watch or anything. So you work with, I know how fast I'm going with my stroke count. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just learn through experience. Um. Any other training thing you want to tell us about? <laughs> so you had any <laughs> other adventures? You all the insights, huh? yeah. <laughs> um, not not to rest really. That's I kind I kind yeah. of like like and listen to your body, and it's it is you do need to push yourself, but you also need to to listen to your body. I mean, I I I think I failed more sessions this 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 cycle than I ever did before it was really like cold like I was getting cold it was a couple of months where it was a bit colder in Malta than it usually is so Mm -hmm. my my nights my training would always finish on the week on the Friday and the Saturday that I would always finish at 10 a.m so the longer they get the earlier I start and I always finish at 10 a.m until I start at 10 p.m and 10 10 a.m there's no daytime swing it's always night really yeah 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 um, one because of the sun that we have here during the day it's it's super intense and mm-hmm. two you need to explore the darkness yeah it's a let's, big... be honest, let's be honest the swims it's game time when it when the sun goes down yeah yeah for sure you know? so the more hours the more practice that I have at night and I mean I have a great team they they turn up where I'm they know I'm swimming because I basically just tie my food to a boy swim for 15 minutes out swim for 15 minutes in and repeat the same thing for as many hours and as I'm swimming wow wow <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's swimming at night it's dangerous you can't go too far away you need to right. be res- uh, I'm starting to be a bit more responsible with myself <laughs> that's good you're gonna preserve yourself for the next one if this is your purpose <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and then sometimes they just surprise me and turn up with a canoe or surprise me on my feet with a warm coffee like and oh the, that's lovely you know, a sunrise coffee or something so yeah really nice of them yeah so how do you adjust your I guess your other like your, your life schedule to accommodate for swimming nights all night long through your training period and that's, that's <laughs> the, the beauty of it that you you kind of can start have a live a semi-normal life yeah yeah i guess so <laughs> and it's practicing sleep deprivation <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed yes indeed <laughs> I've, done, I've done eight hour swims and then gone to I, I have a swimming school so i teach kids how to swim so i've done eight hour night swims and then gone washed with a kind of bucket of water on me and straight to the pool and gave lessons for four or five hours wow that's uh yeah I want to hear more about your swim school but t- tell us about tell us a little bit more about the the swim so you did all the right preparation you did a you did the sleep deprivation yeah. <laughs> you trained at night that's awesome to, to yeah, know this is another important um uh, aspect to the training which is your mindset so Absolutely. um I think any ultra distance athlete no matter what discipline or what sport you you need to to have control over your mind because it can take you to very dark places and and if you don't have the the tools and the skills to get yourself out of that dark place it, it's messy and then you'll mm-hmm. be in it for a very long time so 
So what I've done is I've created like a set of tools that I kind of use and my team know to kind of implement when I'm in a specific place to kind of push me towards the light and towards uh, me not remaining in that dark place. So mm -hmm. like even reframing with, with jellyfish and trying to turn the jellyfish, like I, I've been stung hundreds of times. I think probably you have to. <laughs> I have something still on my, on my radar. I haven't done enough sea swimming, but uh, <laughs> I stick to the um, lakes. <laughs> Uh, basically, you know, after being stung so many times and then you're just kind of swimming and kind of dwelling in your thoughts as well and kind of some some insights as well from um, people who understand a lot more in, in, in these things than me in the sense in, in the sense of much higher spirituality than, than me, level of consciousness. And he's, he kind of suggested to me, which kind of I really makes sense, is that a jellyfish, when it comes into contact with your skin, it releases all its energy that it has from itself to you. So what if it is giving you energy rather than taking it away from you? That's a beautiful thought. I love that. <laughs> you know, these kind of little things and, and um, meditating as well and listening to kind of special prayers very old prayers from the south american traditions and listening to these prayers so then when i'm in a dark place they will play it in that one minute and a half that i have my break and it kind of changes my mind frame changes my thought process changes everything and pushes me into a different direction straight away yeah. and i think these tools are a game changer and there's yeah. many of them you know there's a lot a lot and each time um creating new ones now i'm now i'm trying to create a list of new ones from what happened this time yeah you know and this this library and this this kind of kit that i have is ever growing yeah yeah i love that yeah i love i love those mental tools and tricks um thank you for sharing some of them with us that's um it was really neat seeing i just saw a brief video but it was really neat hearing some of the the prayers and things that you're speaking of that's um yeah that's really cool. Um, so take us to the swim. <laughs> How did it start off? <laughs> um, I was told like that the the weather was going to be great for the first four hours. So kind of I knew and kind of when you're starting a swim, when the weather is not so great, it's windy. And so you're like, OK, <laughs> looking at Gordon and telling him, are you sure? Like, are you sure? <laughs> And he's like, yes, yes, we're sure. We're good. This is it. Let's go. And um, it, it kind of, because there, there was a heat wave in all of Europe for, for about a week. And it really messed up with the kind of the, what's the word that they use? Kind of the, the things they used to measure, the, the like wind finder and windy and all these kind of to measure. The wind was giving unpredictable kind of... Um, patterns so mm -hmm. one hour it's one way the other hour it's the other way the other hour it's the other way the other hour it's the other way and and so I ended up swimming in this kind of thing that was kind of pushing me from from everywhere wow. and and kind of I'm there in the middle there's there are some videos um that we'll be releasing soon um great that's kind of when I saw it I was like wow it, it was rough <laughs> Like, I don't I don't remember it as bad as it was and even I read the it's finally ready we're going to be submitting it um by early next week the documentation mm -hmm. when I read it I was like oh, it was harder than I think it was, it was. Like, <laughs> and this is just the first four hours you're talking about that yeah was... no because that got extended to 24 yeah. hours that's oh, kind gosh. of never wow. it didn't stop so oh, wow um the kind of the 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 part of the team where I have the most experienced open water swimmers that are part of my team were kind of discussing between themselves saying like, we're going to go to bed now, but the chances are we'll be woken up halfway through the night because he stopped. And, and they kept saying that for the next six hours, like, okay, now it's kind of probably the last six hours. And this, and he, they kind of were surprised that I actually remained in the water for, for 52 hours. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So nonstop windy waves the whole time <laughs> touching the boat no nothing yeah. yeah wow how did it how did you handle the sleep deprivation going like when did it first start affecting you understanding you trained for it really well of course <laughs> um 
to be honest, the, 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 it was so rough in the first 12, 18 hours that it kind of took a lot out of me, more than I mm-hmm. thought it did. And I was hallucinating very quick, very quickly. Wow. Um, wow. And uh, very, very clear, vivid hallucinations to the point where kind of I was stopping and kind of looking down at the sea and trying to kind of like, I am seeing what I'm seeing. Yes. Like I'm not, I'm, um, and I kind of um, was trying to figure it out, but I was uh, comfortable in that space. It wasn't kind of scaring me or making me feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. or think so I was kind of moving with it I mean I for me it was like opened up I was seeing people under there a whole city of people so it's like I saw Atlantis <laughs> oh, wow like like in like the oceans which gave me a gift like kind of you've done like 100,000 100 hours or whatever you've done in the ocean so now you can see like this is like you've you've earned your right to see what there really is below wow. the surface <laughs> wow that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> So how did you, so you just started, were you hallucinating then the whole time after that? Or was it kind of coming um, so, and going? And So basically it was very based, very little hallucinations. Just seeing like blue mandalas with all the blue and the sun rays reflecting in the sea. Mm-hmm. And then kind of, I started seeing um, um, like a snail, a big shell of a snail that was kind of highlighted with polka dots on it. And then that turned into a bird with wings behind it. And then that turned into them being people and a lot of them and the whole village of wow. whole city. That's and so that carried cool. on for basically the rest of the swim. The nights were a bit more intense and it was the visions got a little bit rougher, um, not so pleasant, especially towards the end. I, I think like took me a while to swim the last four kilometers. It was right there, Schlendi. It was rough again. The wind picked up. The sun went down. The sea turned red. Oh. It got intense, but like the team really kind of stuck by me to kind of get me through. And, like, and it was like taking the meaning of you hit a wall um, to the next level because I could see a rubble wall in front of me and I'm trying to step over this rubble wall while I'm <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and the doctors are telling me there's nothing there. You're just imagining it. So I was just putting full trust that I had into my team and then just putting one hand in front of the other, one hand in front of the other till I was getting closer and closer to to go. So. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> How many times did... Uh... Or I guess was it was it a consistent thing like your team having to kind of like you said you've got this tools like these tools to help them kind of bring you back from these dark places and bring you to the light was that kind of just an ongoing thing or was there just some a few specific yeah, there's times? Quite, there's a quite a lot of them, so yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> there's for the good times, there's for the bad times. There's yeah. something for almost not everything, but that's where I'm heading towards more more things to make it easier. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm guessing if you would have had better conditions, like you said, you maybe wouldn't have been hallucinating so early yeah. on. <laughs> and it also gives me the courage that there's a potential for a lot more. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's I'm 42 exciting. kilometers in the first 21 hours. Like that's one. I, I usually swim at around 145, 150 pace. That's three minutes per hundred. That's so like every four strokes, one and three quarters was taking me nowhere. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It sounds a lot. Right, yeah. The potential for more, I see there for sure. And it sounds like you're you're going for it too. <laughs> the time is right, yeah. Yes, I, have, yeah. I, have, I, have, I have the next couple of years planned. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> but right now you're in just full rest mode. <laughs> yeah, full rest mode. Um, kind of the doctors told me you need to take this as it's like you did as just did as an operation so you need six weeks recovery no work no anything I'm like mm, yeah that's not gonna happen I need to work <laughs> recover slowly but I need to work I got that sit at home for six weeks right right not possible <laughs> yeah I want to come back maybe one time when I'm it's my profession and I'm a professional athlete then maybe but right now it's kind of uh, my sidekick yeah right yeah (laughs) and I guess there's something about like the passion that you have for you know for marathon swimming that you want I mean with 
like if you're, you're is your, your full-time work is the swim school or do you have other work as well no, as no, the, no, the full-time work is the swim school yeah you want to you know like infuse that passion with like this young while well, it's kind of fresh too i don't know do, do they yeah. tell me a little about the swim school did the kids yeah, the all school. run up to you and <laughs> show up yeah, at the finish yeah. line and all that yeah there was, there was a lot of people uh about two three thousand people at the finish line um and they were screaming it was wild like the screaming was wild and um kind of when i don't know if you saw any videos online um I, i'm trying to think i'm getting of, i'll send you a couple of links when we're yes, done please um, please that's kind of after not having any weight on my knees for 52 hours as soon as i stood up fell back down again on walking up the beach and then I tried to stand up again and still fell down again and then they like, trying to make everyone quiet down so kind of I can concentrate a little bit more and then I kind of stood up and slowly made it to the to the chair where I kind of sat down and <laughs> yeah yeah that's a that's a lot that was what I I just did a short 15 hour swim this this year but I, I did a couple different routes and I connected them so I would, but I really enjoyed getting out and like touching the ground like and stretching a little between each like it, I don't know it's because you, you no matter how much stretching you do in the water you're not doing it under gravity's weight and so it like when that yeah. when that hits you after being in the water for a long time it's rough <laughs> yeah and someone also it. suggested I need to start doing some easy runs because um you need to kind of get your bone density kind of when you're in that space you need to be careful of you're being so not many hours in the sea with non-weight bearing it can cause kind of problems interesting yeah like astronauts but i can't run to save exactly but i can't run to save my life <laughs> <laughs> literally literally a brisk walk i'll do right <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh okay um any other things that you actually saw in the sea or was it all just hallucinations? <laughs> um, hallucinate, jellyfish, hallucinations, no fish. <laughs> Not, nothing actually? None doesn't? of the good stuff. None oh. of the good stuff. Oh, man. No, the, vis the visions were beautiful, actually. I didn't find yeah. them. Um, but yeah, it was a kind of eye-opener as well that we really need to start making changes in our lives to, to consume less, watch what we're buying because we are destroying our planet and uh, and it shows because I had my head in the water for 52 hours with goggles on and I didn't see anything that's crazy that's crazy yeah I've heard about like dead spots in the ocean but that's a, that's a, that's insane <laughs> 52 hours and did not see anything no. other than the hallucinations wow did you run into a lot of plastic uh, we did pick up quite a bit, yeah. Not like I would say we filled the whole kind of boat full, but we did pick up things on the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, it, like going back to the swim, it's it's it was tough. Like there was, it was kind of a very a life changing experience for me for sure. It's 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 there were times where I kind of I was kind of like, okay, I'm done. I I'm I'm done. I want to get out, you know, and. And then I kind of find myself again and push myself, okay, let's do another 30 minutes, let's do another 30 minutes, especially in the beginning when it, it was rough, when it's rough at night, for me, the energy is moving around super fast. So I was really scared. Um, I'm not scared to swim at night, I swim at night in, on my own. Uh -huh. But I was feeling like at that point, something was going to eat me. Wow. Wow. Huh. Because the energies were moving so fast, it was rough. So it's wild and, and um, yeah, it gets scary. It got scary. Yeah. Did you have any support swimmers come in with you at all? Um, I did a few times, not in the beginning though, not at, not at that point. I don't, at night it's, they wouldn't come in. It would be more maybe a bit during the day, but I've decided I don't like it. I don't oh, like it. really? Having, yeah. Not it can be that... yeah some people love it and some people don't and i i mean yeah that's um because when you're doing when you're swimming for so long like i'm tired and and sometimes it's not that they're going to try and swim faster than me but it's sometimes you just want to slow down a little bit and take a breather and yeah i don't know i kind of like being in there alone you just um, wanna it to be it's your space it's your thing yeah. I, I get that yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they did swim with me a bit and it did help a bit, but they were kind of right behind my feet. But 
Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like pressure that I kind of need to keep up with them or they need to keep up with me. And I'm like too, too many thoughts like for it too much. Like I have, I prepared the team with everything to, so I don't have to think of anything. There's protocol for everything. Right. That's, this happens, that's amazing. There's this, that happens. There's that. So I don't, I, I kind of like all the pressure is really on them. Really. It's, it's a, it's a lot of pressure for, for, to take a team of 22 people all the way to Linoza to swim back with somebody in the water. The, the doctors have pressure. They're ready to, to perform an operation if, if need be. You know, there are three doctors on board. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a lot. At that point, they were trying to change. They changed the roster because it's um, on, the, on the boat next to me. There's every two hours, somebody changes because... The way we like to work is that they cannot be tired on that boat, on the support boat that is right next to me. You cannot be like lying down and sleeping because that then they start taking energy from me. They need to be alert. They need to be there. So I take the energy yeah, from them. Got it. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And at night, on the first night, it was too dangerous to tr- to ferry people from the sailing boats to the boat because the boats were going up and down and to transfer people was becoming dangerous. Wow. So, so they all had to just be on it the whole time. <laughs> they were trying to make changes, but they were changing the shift times and and everything. So, um, yeah, the team. There's a lot of pressure on them because yeah, it's intense seeing somebody going through all that when you're sitting and watching, and you, I am there. I'm not their their responsibility at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. It, it's it's intense and they see me hallucinating they see me exhausted they see me getting bitten by jellyfish they, yeah. you know it's, it's intense for them so like i'm always super grateful that they come and they give their kind of 150 percent and even more if it kind of exists that it could be more you know they're always there for anything no one says no to anyone for anything you need this yes as good as neil needs that neil wanted a coffee neil wanted this neil did that neil needs a doctor <laughs> you know so they have a tough job and i kind of train for this they kind of get chucked on a boat and <laughs> yeah. like, don't really know what they're getting themselves into like I, we didn't know what we we're getting ourselves into jumping from 28 hours to 52 hours Wow. Uncharted yeah. waters for us. You know, that was an increase of 85%. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. If not, if not more, you know. Um, so <laughs> it's uncharted water. So for the team, for us, even the ones who there, Gordon has been there from day one, from the first swim, and there were a few others as well, but it's new for us. We, we, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to mm-hmm. happen to me. So it's we're learning we yeah. Learned a lot. yeah yeah I um I want to go back to you know you said that it's it's your purpose and I mean I but is your purpose just to keep pushing that limit like until um, you or is it your purpose to like purpose, raise this more awareness tell, tell me I think it's kind of the tale of boat because it's one to kind of defy what is we think is humanly possible like mm-hmm. doctors always tell me it's impossible to remain awake for two over two days while doing an activity. It is like, it's impossible. It, it's not possible. And physios are telling me it's impossible. Your arms can do, your shoulders can handle so many rotations. It, that's not possible without you getting injured. It's not mm-hmm. possible, but it is. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. And we'll see how far it can go. And Excellent. <laughs> and if it fails, then I will work harder, find the mistakes and try it again and push through those boundaries. I love that. I love that. And it makes it... it um... The side of the environment as well, where I now have a voice where people can will listen when I, when I say something. And so I can, can change people's lives, not only towards the environment, but towards themselves to have more belief, more confidence in themselves. And... It's a it's a very special tool, but needs to be handled with a lot of care as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Tell us about um, how Wave of Change is doing. <laughs> Wave of Change is is going it's going uh, really good. It's getting uh, we've just become a foundation on um, Earth Day. We we signed the deed this year, so we are officially a found, an NGO. Um, 
And yeah, we're kind of now, each time we're going up a level where the first year it was kind of, okay, nobody knows what wave of change is and let's make people aware of it and how that it's important to keep our seas clean. And then Mm -hmm. from there, we went to to the next level where we're asking people to pick up the plastic from the floor and pick it up from the sea. So that's level two. And now we need to inspire them to make these behavioral changes that we mentioned before, that it's this is kind of the next level. And then once we have that and we have a rally of people on our side, then we need to go to the government and we need to change policy because yeah. that's when the big changes happen. What so about the so corporations easy. that are plasticking stuff that comes to us? How can we get yeah. to them? <laughs> um, it's difficult to convince them to make less money right for the benefit of the environment so there's very few that will consider that an option especially now with with what's been happening in the world for the last kind of 18 20 yeah. months or whatever however long it's been i don't even know how <laughs> no, long i can't believe all lost track of time <laughs> um, so it's difficult so the, we need to go to the change policy and yeah. then they have to yeah yep. and especially for the big corporations that are the biggest polluters what Instead of making 150 billion or million or whatever you make, make 10 million less. Right, right. Or just don't, you know, yeah. We're not telling you instead of making 100 euro, make or 100 dollars, and you're going to make 75 dollars. You know, that's that. Then it's it's kind of uh, life, not life or death, but you kind of need it to live. But these guys are making millions. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. yeah. So, like, um, yeah, one it's kind of a power game for them, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. get it. I don't get it, but I, I don't I can't get it. And I it will be difficult for me to comprehend, but I that's what I think it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I appreciate that you're tackling that. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to figure out how I can help too. Um, I want to hear a little bit more though about your swim school before we've got to wrap it up. So tell yeah, me how you founded it or now yeah, all, all everything. Yeah. <laughs> Found was founded 12 years ago now um, when I was with uh, my best friend who is we're still partners in the swimming school um, we kind of were giving lessons at our swim club and we're like oh teaching 10 children each kind of really big groups and we're like oh if we have two children each we'll make more money <laughs> and so and so that's how it kind of started and um the first year we had 40 children over the summer and then it's kind of been growing from then and now we also have children who take part in some competitions as well and um yeah it's a kind of my life is revolved around the water the water yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) so um it is it's good I like having everything kind of it's what I love to do so yeah very lucky have you been able to increase your reach just with like some of the, you know, the publicity and things you get for your swims? Like to yes, more but, kids? but it's difficult to tell because with COVID, the business has been taken yeah. a big hit. So, you yeah. you know, you can't really tell if it has or hasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but since the last swim, I more people notice me in the streets. That's that's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> what is it? Just kids, or do you do teach adults as well? No, I do fitness and and performance adults as well. Yeah, and babies from six months. I teach can teach babies from six months. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think that's about when I got my kids in the water too. Um, that's lovely. It's I, nice um, to have access to so many children where you can kind of mold them and kind of give them your take on 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 life and what values they need to have as well you know you, you get to see these children once a week so you have a leave a mark on 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 them you know yeah absolutely well i'll always remember their their swim teacher yeah. <laughs> that's awesome um i I guess, I, have you just changed anything with COVID, like in how you're teaching lessons or anything like um, that? Yeah, we're a lot more restricted and they're all in very restrictive bubbles and everything. Um, we were teaching with masks um, earlier this year, mm-hmm. but even the beginner classes, but now we're not mm-hmm. um, because the are vaccinated and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't really know how it kind of all works that, but it has been different. Um, we... 
have to be a lot more like we usually kind of let try and let everyone replace their lessons and kind of not miss any and now we can't do that because they have to be in a certain bubble but mm. um yeah it's been okay i guess but it's also opened the space for me to be able to do these swims because this the, we, we close twice for for three months each year so it let me be a pro athlete for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> interesting (laughs) it's lovely oh man um anything else you want to tell us or share with us this time around (laughs) i have a feeling we'll be we'll be seeing you again (laughs) yeah um i haven't really decided what i would like to do but i would definitely want to try and um grow my reach with people so I potentially it hasn't been kind of confirmed yet, obviously, because we still need to submit the documentation, but I kind of broke a world record and it's not that many people know about it. When you come from a small country, like like we're from, from Malta, it's like, who's Neil, where's Malta, you know? And so it kind of swimming isn't like the swimming is in the States and in um, Australia. It's bigger in Australia and the UK than in the US, (laughs) personally. yeah but kind of you know what i mean we need to be able to get a bigger reach to be able to get uh, proper endorsement sponsors get more people involved kind of make the sport more popular mm-hmm. and then we can i can make this which is my purpose my my full-time job as well you know mm-hmm. so yeah. this is kind of the next step so maybe do a swim in the uk get their attention because then once the stories run in the UK then everyone will run the story you know so yeah, yeah I know what you that's mean. kind of that's kind of where we're, where I'm heading I think and, mm-hmm. and then um, next year, the year after I kind of already have a plan of what I want to do um but it's going to need some some backing from some 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 company <laughs> somebody beside your swim school <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so anyone listening to this podcast hit me up <laughs> Exactly. Tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just on that note, I guess part of what I like to try to get to with marathon swim stories is like the benefits. I was actually just trying to write this when you were dealing with kind of your technical do your technical difficulties. I was like, is it like how can we make people like first of all, I feel like with marathon swim stories, I want people to understand that we're not crazy or insane. We're we're like we want to like find it's like we're finding out more about ourselves but there's also like the selflessness of the team like the way you talk about them and I think they're benefiting from being a part of these big endeavors as well and if there's some way that we can kind of encapsulate like that personal growth and like you know like that that how that's good for everybody um I think yeah. that's what I that because not everybody of course wants to swim as far or as long as we do or wants to push their limits but but that's what I guess when you were fine kind of coming like when I first heard about wave of change Malta you were talking about like it was a little bit about plastics but it was a little bit about just kind of getting people off the couch and I and I and that's part of with marathon swim stories I'll get off my soapbox here in a second <laughs> so you can chime in but it um you know I want it I want people to, yeah not to just look and like oh my god that person did that thing and they're so crazy like I want or they did that you know I want it to be accessible and like for people to realize their own potential yeah, I'll be quiet I mean, now. I've received hundreds and hundreds of messages where, where people have told me, oh, I've been wanting to this, this kind of little kind of run or, or kind of I walk to work every day and I did it stopped and now you gave me the encouragement to, to do it. Like I've had people say I've put pictures on my screensaver of when my alarm rings. So when it rings and I don't want to get out of bed and go for my run, I kind of remember what you did and I do it. So these are big wins, not little wins, big wins. Um, Being more active, being more out in nature, being more induced in this environment, no matter for what, for how long, whether it's a 10 minute, five minute, you go do a yoga session in nature, any, anything, it can be anything and they can benefit tenfolds for it, you know, and swimming is underrated a lot. Open water swimming, ultra distance swimming is underrated. This is a sport where you have no, you have a team that help you from the side, but they're not allowed to touch you. You don't like, uh, 
with no disrespect to any other sports, but for example, ultra distance running, if they want to stop and sit down and have a rest, they can stop and sit down and have a rest. We have nowhere to rest. Mm -hmm. We're treading water. Whether it comes a bit easier to us than others, it's still being active and it's still working your body, you know? So um, just give the story about what ultra distance swimming is about, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Thank you for sharing more of your story neil i look forward to continuing to follow you. <laughs> you i hope you enjoyed today's interview do you want to take marathon swim stories with you subscribe on your favorite podcast provider want to connect with like-minded limit pushers join us for marathon swim stories live on tuesdays at 5 30 a.m pacific 8 30 eastern 13 30 gmt thanks for watching